Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I've started posting these videos um, just about a week ago, and I'm starting to see some, some views, um, which is pretty cool. And the video that's got um, by far the most reviews so far is my review of the G.I. Joe Collectors Club Final 12 figures, which I just got in the mail uh, this week. So I thought, well, maybe I'll do another review in the same vein, and I'll take a look at the very first figure subscription service that the Collectors Club offered us. So before I get into looking at the figures, I'll just give you a little bit of background. Um, the G.I. Joe Collectors Club is like a fan club that supports G.I. Joe. It's not operated by Hasbro, um, and it's been in operation, I think, since the late 90s um, so it's been putting on conventions um, and it's really kind of grown over the years so the club makes exclusive figures that uh, they started out making figures for their conventions I guess to draw people there and none of the figures really interested me that much it was you know a little bit of a repaint putting a guy that usually wears blue putting him in red and yeah, it wasn't really enough to get me uh, excited about any other figures. But as the years went on, they started getting a little bit more creative and making cooler figures and figures that became a lot more important to fill holes in, in collections. So my interest with the club started um, when they really got on board with the modern era look of figures. So the modern era kicked off in 2007 but the club didn't really embrace it till maybe two or three years later. The figures that they were making for their conventions, even in 2007, 2008, were still the old, what we call the O-ring style that had the little elastic in the middle that held G.I. Joe's together. And the G.I. Joe's were a little, little shorter and a little less detailed. But um, yeah, around 2009, 2010, they really uh, embraced the modern era look of figures. And I was really into the modern era when it started and I wanted a complete set. So that's when I thought, well, I better start paying attention to the club. So originally it started out that they would just put out a convention set every year, which was a big box set that they would sell at the conventions. Now, fortunately, they did make a few available online that you could purchase. Um, they also had a free figure that came with the subscription every year. So you paid, I don't know, like 60 bucks to join the subscription uh, what that got you every year to be a member was a newsletter every month, but it also got you a free figure. So the first year that they offered a uh, a modern era figure as their free membership figure, uh, I missed out on, and then that figure got really expensive on the secondary market. So I thought, okay, I'm not going to miss out on this stuff anymore. Even though it's already expensive from the club, it's only going to get more expensive if I wait till eBay. So I was buying the convention sets, I was getting the free membership figure. Every now and again, they put out just kind of an extra figure. And then in 2013, they announced that they were gonna do a figure subscription service. So this is where you would pay a, a, a big lump sum fee uh, and they would send you a figure in the mail. And they were, so what they did is you would get over the course of six months, you would get two figures in the mail each month. So you'd have a total of 12 figures. And they would reveal those figures to you in advance, so you knew which characters to expect, but you didn't know which order they'd arrive in. So there was always a lot of anticipation, wondering what was gonna show up in the mailbox each month. And then what made it even more exciting was that they said that they would include a 13th mystery figure with the final box. So when we get our sixth box, there was three figures in there. Um, the last two that we were expecting, and then something brand new that nobody had seen before. And the figure subscription service seemed to really catch on, so they started doing it every year, and now there are eight figure subscription services. So we've got quite a few figures over the course of those, um, wasn't quite eight years, I think um, we're looking at six years, because they kind of started cramming them out. Once the Collectors Club knew they were losing the license, they started... Uh, putting these things out a little faster, um, which was a little hard on the wallet, but at the same time, I appreciated them getting all these figures out because every figure subscription service had uh, had some great figures in there. 
So for today's video, I'm going to take a look at uh, figure subscription service version 1.0. So first we'll take a look at Jinx, or as her display base says, Kim Arashikaji, which is uh, her real name. I'm not sure why they didn't go with Jinx there. Sometimes they lose the copyright to these names. So Jinx, the very original figure, came out in 1987, and she was a favorite of mine. She was the first female ninja and dressed all in red. She was Storm Shadow's cousin, I believe. And yeah, I just really liked the figure. Plus, she was featured pretty prominently in the, uh, the animated movie, and I liked her, her portrayal a lot in there, too. So, Jinx was one of the characters I really wanted a modern era figure of. Um, and in 2012, we got our first one, which was her classic kind of red ninja pajamas. And we also got a variation of that in a white outfit, with, which was unmasked. And those were both convention exclusives. And then they gave us this version. So this Jinx here is based on her uh, a 2004 figure, which uh, once we were into 2004, that would be what we called the new sculpt era of G.I. Joe. So after a couple of years of dormancy, G.I. Joe came back in 2002 and they had a different build, a different, a different look, and just a different aesthetic overall. And so fans kind of dubbed it New Sculpt, and that has stuck. So it was kind of a different look for Jinx. And this figure captures it pretty well. It's not identical. And it's pretty different from Jinx's normal pajama look. I don't have the classic red one here with me at the moment. But uh, you'll see here, this is what it looks like. Um, so we've got her in her Tiger Force green and stripes. And then this is her... Uh, outfit from the retaliation figure line in yellow so i'm happy that i've got the the, the uh, masked classic ninja version in a couple of different colors but uh this figure here is kind of just a nice uh different take on jinx and even though it's uh the head's maybe a little small and the neck's maybe a little long it looks really nice and the head sculpt was brand new at the time now, uh, we were a little spoiled in the first figure subscription service because we got a lot of brand new head sculpts. They got fewer and fewer as the years went on. So yeah, it's appreciated every time we get uh, a new head there. So next up is the Cobra Nano Bat. Now the bats are Cobra's battle android troopers and they have been a staple of G.I. Joe since the mid 80s. And when the, um, the modern era figure started, um, some of the first figures they put out um, weren't the greatest. It took a little trial and error. Usually the second, third versions of characters are uh, much improved. But the Bat is one of those figures that they got perfect right out of the gate. And you'll see this figure is pretty much an exact, just a repaint of the first Bat they gave us in the modern era. So all the same parts. I think they changed the, uh, the upper legs there but otherwise same idea you've got the interchangeable interchangeable parts so you can change out that clawed hand for a flamethrower or a, i think drill or grenade launcher and he also has an additional hand if you just want to want him to have two hands and i think i've got that stored yeah there's actually room in the back of the backpack there that you can put the hand in there so you don't don't lose it and yeah so this is a great sculpt i love this figure um he came with some additional parts here too which i'm not showing you um this bat figure we get in all kinds of different color variations over the years um here's a a version that they gave us a little bit later and you'll see here it's compared to this version he has a battle damaged head and a battle damaged chest piece. And the nano, nano bat came with both of those as well. I've got him displayed with his damaged chest piece, but I don't have him displayed with his damaged head. But still, it was nice to have the option. And yeah, he looks really cool in these colors. Now this here was the real star of the first figure subscription service. This is probably the figure that convinced a lot of people to take a chance and spend the money and sign up for this. Because uh, Big Bo was a fan favorite character 
originally released in 1987. And he is like the Cobra trainer. The original concept behind him is they were, G.I. Joe was actually going to add uh, Rocky Balboa to the ranks of G.I. Joe. And so they created Big Boa as his rival on the Cobra team. Now, something didn't happen with the, the licensing for Rocky, so that never materialized. But we still got Big Boa. And yeah, he was a great figure back in 87. And we never got a new version of him. Not in the retro, not in the uh, vintage line. Or in the uh, the new sculpt line of the early 2000s. So people were really excited to get a new version of Big Boa. And this is a great version of Big Boa. He's got a brand new head sculpt. Which is very good recreation of the vintage helmet. And then his body is made up of uh, Night Adder. Which is a nice good muscly body. It works for Big Boa perfectly. He's got the boxing gloves, which you could take off, and he's got uh, just standard hands that you can attach. Uh, and he also came with a punching bag, so a very cool figure. Next up is Barrel Roll. Now, Barrel Roll was not a vintage G.I. Joe. He was one of the new characters that was introduced in the new sculpt era. So the first figure of him ever came out in uh, 2003. And he was also featured in the comic books put out by Devil's Do at the time. So... This version is based on the kind of the second and third versions of him because the 2003 look had a blue uniform and that's what he wore in the comic books. But then they released other versions of him in uh, 2004, 2005, and he was wearing this kind of brand, brown and tan outfit. So that's what the uh, Collector's Club based this version on. So he's pretty cool. Again, he's got a brand new head sculpt under there. And he's got this backpack, rocket pack, glider pack, I'm not sure. So while I would have preferred Barrel Roll in his blue colors, um, just because um, that's the figure I had from 2003, and I liked his look in the comic books, this is still a pretty cool figure. I like the head sculpt, the colors work well together, and yeah. He's got some nice accessories. So next up is Dice. So this is one of the Cobra Ninjas. The original was released back in 1992. And this was the first time we got um, a redo of Dice. So this is version 2. So it had been a good long time. So there was probably a lot of fans that were really eagerly anticipating this figure as well. Not as much as, say, Big Boa. But it's still a pretty cool figure. Now, he doesn't have any new parts. Um, he actually has a removable mask, too, which the original did not have. So you pop that off. And he's not recognizable as any other G.I. Joe, which is kind of cool, because this head was originally used um, for an Aqua Viper, which wore, wears a helmet over top of it anyway. So you normally don't see this head anywhere. So it seemed like almost like a brand new head. And this mask... Um, it came with a like training version of Storm Shadow, and it seems like it was clearly intended to be Dice's mask all along, because that's what the vintage mask looked like. So yeah, he's got some, some cool parts too. I'm, I don't have all of his weapons displayed. I've got him with these kind of Wolverine claws. But yeah, he was a, another great figure. And this here is Topside. And this is version 2 of Topside. So the only other version of him is the 1990 original. Now, I didn't have the 1990 original. I was kind of out of G.I. Joe's by that point as a kid. So I don't have a whole lot of nostalgic love for this character. So he wouldn't have been high on my list. But this is actually a really nice figure. I like him a lot. Um, he has got, again, a brand new head sculpt. And it's a nice head sculpt with the beard and kind of flat haircut. And then the whole body is just a reuse of Shipwreck's body. And again, he's got a lot of neat little accessories. Yeah, so not a character I was needing, but uh, I'm happy to have him. He's a good addition to the team. This here is CoverGirl version 4. Now this was another highly sought after character, probably um, after Big Boa, she's probably fetches the highest price on the secondary market from this subscription service. 
Um, there hadn't been any other cover girl released in the modern era at that time. And she is a fan favorite character. So there's not really any new parts here. This head is the first time we've got it in the modern era. But the club managed to take a head from a 2006 figure released during the uh, new sculpt years and just uh, tweak it a little bit so it worked with this modern era figure. And then our body here is just made up of a uh, scarlet body, but the addition of the, the jacket um, makes it stand out so it's not recognizable as, as scarlet at first glance. And yeah, it's a very nice version of CoverGirl. This is TNT or as you can see on his display base, Theodore and Thomas. And this is version one, at least as far as North American collectors are concerned. But what this is, is uh, back in 1986, uh, in Argentina, they took a blowtorch figure for the most part and just released him in these colors. And so, and they gave him the name TNT. And so he's been a sought after uh, piece for collectors to go find these weird repaints that were only available in foreign countries. So the Collectors Club here has given us a modern version of TNT, who was formerly only available in Argentina. So he's made up of mostly blowtorch parts. He's got blowtorch's, blowtorch's head with that kind of weird little smirk, as well as some of blowtorch's accessories. Um, but there are some other parts in there as well. He's got uh, some snake eyes parts, and he doesn't have the, uh, the the kind of gas mask that Blowtorch wears. So when you display them next to each other on the shelf, they still look pretty different. And his color scheme is pretty unique um, with that uh, shiny silver paint and then the yellow and blue. So yeah, he's a pretty cool character. He might not be for everybody, but uh, for those that have been looking for the vintage figure and didn't want to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get him, this is a pretty cool little thing from the club. So similar to TNT, Coral is a figure that was only available in the United Kingdom. And she was released way back in like 83, 84. And she was a repaint of the very original Scarlet figure. And again, she's very sought after by collectors to get that original vintage Coral figure. So the club here has given us a, the first official North American version of Coral. So her body is made up of the very first Scarlet from the modern era, which would be true to the, the vintage version who was made up, the, made up of the original Scarlet. But thankfully they gave us, uh, this is still a Scarlet head, but it's a later Scarlet head, which was uh, a big improvement over the, uh, the original modern era Scarlet. So I think this comes together pretty good. The colors are true to uh, the original. And she's got her little... Uh, Logo painted on her arm there. And she's got her uh, Union Jack on the sleeve. So yeah, this figure might have turned out a little bit better if they made her a year or two later because this Scarlet Body is one of those early modern era figures I mentioned earlier that didn't turn out the best. They definitely improved these down the road. But I still think this is a pretty, uh, a pretty nice figure to have in the collection. Next up is Iron Claw. Now this guy here, probably a lot of people don't know, and that's because he's not from the vintage line or the new sculpt line. He actually came from uh, the G.I. Joe Extreme line, which lasted for one year in 1995. Kind of after the, uh, the vintage line wrapped up in 94 and Hasbro was kind of done with G.I. Joe, they licensed it out to Kenner and Kenner made these larger figures that weren't as articulated, brand new characters. And yeah, it's called uh, G.I. Joe Extreme and it sucked and nobody was interested in it. But the best thing to come out of it was the villain. So Iron Claw was kind of like their version of Cobra Commander. And it's pretty cool that the club kind of went into that obscure corner of the G.I. Joe mythos and pulled out Iron Claw. So now he is part of... Uh, standard G.I. Joe canon and he has a brand new head and it's very neat very uh, Darth Vader-esque and then uh, his body is mostly made up of uh, Destro parts. Now this is Surefire. Now sort of like topside 
he's a figure that I didn't have before. The only other versions of him came out in 2001, 2002. So he's kind of from a, a weird era of G.I. Joe. And uh, yeah, so he's a character. He would not have made my list of figures I was looking for, but the club made a very nice figure out of him. And so, yeah, I was happy to get him. And one thing I do kind of like about this figure is that he's a little different. Um, usually the club tries very close um, to recreate the vintage figure. And this guy here, he's got a, uh, a beard. And uh, previous versions uh, never had a beard. They sculpted this head brand new for Surefire. Um, so I don't know why they decided to give him a beard. Because people that maybe liked the older version would perhaps be upset by that. But I, uh, I think he looks good with the, with the little goatee there. And uh, yeah, I think it was a good choice. So next up is Grunt. Now, Grunt was one of the very original G.I. Joes um, released back in 1982. And all those guys get um, figures in the modern era line. But the Grunt that came out in 2008, I wasn't really happy with. Um, it just it didn't look like Grunt. He looked too young. I feel these guys, since they're the original lineup, should look a little bit older. And this guy does. And the head actually isn't new. It was reused from Zap, um, which is fine with me because Zap's got black hair and a mustache painted on, so they don't even look like the same head. But even back in 1982, those guys shared a head anyway, so it makes sense. And yeah, I actually think this is a, a very cool figure. So it's Grunt in his uh, tan outfit, which he wore in 1983. And he's got a little glider pack here as well, which press this button here on the back and the glider wings pop out. So yeah, he's got Zap's head and he's got Snake Eyes' body and it works very well to create a original 13 look for Tan Grunt. And last but not least is Blackout. So Blackout was the 13th mystery figure. So we did not know we were getting this guy until he showed up in the mailbox. And some people might have been a little disappointed because some old school Joe fans don't even know who this guy is. I was actually pretty happy to get him because he was introduced in the New Sculpt era, which I was a fan of. And he had a pretty prominent role in the Devil's Due comic books, which I really liked. So he's actually the brother of Barrel Roll. And so they had a whole little storyline with these two being brothers. They were competitive. One guy joined G.I. Joe, one guy joined Cobra, and they had a sister, too, named Bombshell, who did eventually get a figure a couple years down the road as well. So it's pretty cool that the club kind of delved into the new sculpt uh, mythology and found this little family drama to give us. So Blackout, um, he's got a new head, but kind of like with uh, Cover Girl, it's actually just a... They took the head from the first figure from 2003 and just kind of tweaked it a little bit so it worked with the, uh, the modern era body. And then he's got kind of mixed parts. I think he's got Zartan's chest armor in there. And yeah, these goggles, they can slide down. You can wear those, but it doesn't look great. Anyway, yeah, I really like this figure. Um, I feel he should maybe look a little bit more menacing. He looks more like kind of a high school bully than a Cobra sniper, but... Yeah, it's a cool figure, and I was very happy to get uh, this character in the modern era. All right, so those are the figures from Figure Subscription Service 1.0. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'd even really appreciate it if you could comment. Um, even though some of my videos are starting to get quite a few views, I haven't got any comments for everybody, so I'm looking forward to my first comment. So if you, if you enjoyed the video or have any any tips for me or any suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks a lot for watching.